Welcome into the Packaday podcast here on YouTube. It is Friday. Appreciate you taking some time out of your Friday to join me and talk some Packers. Going to be going over the Packers offensive line and where they were at this past season, where they could head this off season. And this is really one of the more intriguing groups that we're going to be covering uh, as, as I kind of go through position by position in my off season review. Let's start by going over how they played last year, because first and foremost, I thought David Bakhtiari and Corey Lindsley not surprisingly, of course, were the heart and soul of this Packers offensive line. I thought both of them were phenomenal. Bakhtiari, if you go back, you know, uh, prior to, to 2019, I actually thought there were times in 2019 where he struggled. Now, he had some injury issues early in the year, uh, but I really felt like in 2019, he struggled to anchor at times. And he, in against power rushers and, and players that could really get under his pads and push him backwards, Bakhtiari struggled and Bakhtiari is so good that like even when he's struggling you, you know you want to talk about Aaron Rodgers you know his uh, you know worst years are you know other quarterbacks career years uh, David Bakhtiari is the same exact way like even in 2019 where I thought he was maybe a step below his normal standards and I think it was honestly due to injury uh, he was still fantastic but what was happening is he would stay between his man and Aaron Rodgers but he would get pushed back into him so far that he was basically like right on Rodgers. And again, credit to Bakhtiari for even in that situation, staying between the two. Uh, but there were so many times where he just got pushed back into Rodgers. But in 2020, make no mistake about it, David Bakhtiari was phenomenal. That was no longer an issue. He was fantastic as a pass protector. He played really well as a run blocker. I, I frankly thought it was the best season of David Bakht Bakhtiari's career up until the point, obviously, where he got hurt. And that really hurt the, play, uh, the Packers in the playoffs. So Starting off, David Bakhtiari was phenomenal. And then Corey Lindsley, besides, you know, a couple games that he was out due to injury, I didn't have a negative grade all season on Corey Lindsley. In fact, uh, you know, I think there was one game where he was below like plus 1.0, which is just crazy, crazy good. Don't quote me on that last part, but either way, he was absolutely amazing this past year and his level of consistency was ridiculously good. So uh, those two were really the heart and soul of the Packers offensive line. And then you had Elton Jenkins who played really well. Elton Jenkins is on his way to being a perennial Pro Bowl offensive lineman. I don't think he's there quite yet. I think some people just expect that Jenkins is this player that's going out and he's dominating week in and week out. I think he's going to get there. And there's no question that he has a really bright uh, future ahead of him. If he doesn't get an ounce better, he's still a really, really good offensive lineman with versatility to play legitimately five positions, which is crazy. I actually had the discussion with Ben Fennell as like, what's more valuable? Quentin Nelson, who's the best guard in the league, but he can only play left guard, or Elton Jenkins, who isn't quite as good as Nelson and, and, and probably a, a good step or two down, but can literally play all five positions across the offensive line, dependent upon where you need him, what injuries strike. That versatility is crazy unique and crazy special. So uh, his ability to move across the line, but I don't think he's quite there yet where you can just say, plug him in and he's a Pro Bowl player. I still think he has some work to do, but he's well on his way to having a phenomenal career as a Green Bay Packer. And then, you know, Lucas Patrick has was, had some Jekyll and Hyde moments. At right guard, I thought he was really solid this season. At left guard, he really, really struggled. You could tell it was not his natural side. Uh, Rick Wagner, for the most part, played well. In fact, it was really, really good up until end of the season, specifically that Buccaneer uh, NFC Championship game where he really struggled. Up until that point, I thought he played really good football throughout the course of the season. Billy Turner was interesting. I thought at right tackle, which shocks me. I, if you would have told me that Billy Turner was going to be better at tackle than guard, I would have. there's no way I would have seen that coming. But I thought he played really well at right tackle when he actually got those opportunities. Right guard, left tackle, not so much. I thought he struggled. He, he was my only negatively graded player along the offensive line, but a lot of that was at you know left tackle and some of it was at right guard. Right tackle, he played pretty darn well at, and I think he's certainly a starting caliber right tackle in this league. And, uh, you know, plus, as I was mentioning with Elton Jenkins, with Turner can play four positions, probably never going to line up at center, but can definitely play left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle. And again, to have that versatility with both of those guys is crazy. 
Uh, you had some spot starts since, um, you know, not starts, but spot playing time from John Runyon Jr., who I thought looked good in limited action. Um, you know, you saw some Lane Taylor early in the season, who I thought looked really good at right guard in that first game and in training camp before going down with injury. So uh, overall, really liked where the state of this offensive line was at prior to the Bakhtiari injury, all the reshuffling that needed to be done. Lindsley played well in that championship game against the Bucs. Everyone else did not. And this is a, a Packers offense and really a Packers team that in a lot of ways went as their offensive line went. When the offensive line was clicking, there was nobody that was stopping this Packers offense for the vast majority of the season. And when the Packers offense was going, nobody was beating the Packers this season. Now, credit Tampa Bay for getting a ton of pressure and shutting down the run. The Packers picked their worst day to have their worst game uh, along the offensive line. And certainly a, a large part of that was Vita Vea and Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul and uh, that entire group and Dominican Sue, uh, who played phenomenal in that game and against the Chiefs and pretty much everyone else down the stretch. But, uh, you know, the Packers, when they struggled along the offensive line, that's when they had the opportunity uh, to lose some games. And we certainly saw that against Tampa Bay twice. So where does that leave the Packers going into next season? Well, let's start start out with the obvious. So there's four players that you can pretty much bank on are going to be on the team and have some sort of role. And that's Elton Jenkins, Lucas Patrick, John Runyon Jr., and David Bakhtiari. I think those four you can count on. Now, David Bakhtiari, the big question is going to be, when is he going to be able to play? I think there's a good chance he misses a month or two of the season, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but certainly somewhere within that range. Probably is not ready to go uh, week one, week two, and probably early in the year. The, the sooner you can get him back, the better, but that leaves uh, some very interesting questions to start the season. And then including in that is Elton Jenkins. Where is he going to play? With David Bakhtiari out, you could see him play some left tackle. That's definitely within the realm of possibility. You could see him start at center if Corey Lindsley uh, leaves in free agency. If Lindsley's back and Bakhtiari's healthy and Turner's back and maybe, you, you know, everything's good, maybe you see him back at his left guard position. But where does uh, Elton Jenkins ultimately play? I think he ultimately ends up at center replacing Corey Lindsley. More on that in a moment. But could easily see him at left tackle up until the point where David Bakhtiari is ready to return. John Runyon Jr., I think, will compete for a starting spot. And then uh, Lucas Patrick, same thing, either at center or at one of the guard positions, preferably not left guard because he really, really struggled there. So then you have a couple of players who are on the roster that you need to make decisions on. I can't see a scenario. I will say 99% chance that Billy Turner is back. I think going into this season in the contract, there's an out, basically an out in his contract, very similar to Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith, which of course Zadarius won't be used. Preston's probably will, but there's an out in Billy Turner's contract, very similar to those two. I, I can't see them using it. I think it would have been a conversation if Bakhtiari's healthy and, and, and a few other things maybe went right. But I just, I don't see, especially with, with Bakhtiari being uh, injured going into the season, I don't think there's any way that you can let, um, you know, let Billy Turner go. And again, his flexibility to be able to play all across the line is just way too valuable. So very, very much expect him back with the Packers this upcoming season. And then I think the really interesting question mark is Rick Wagner, who I think would have been gone had it not been for the Bakhtiari injury. I still think it's 50-50, and I'm, I'm leaning still towards he's gone, but uh, he played better than, you know, if we want to talk about some of those potential cuts like Preston Smith, Dean Lowry, Christian Kirksey, Rick Wagner played much better than those players did through the course of last season, and his cap's not huge. And of course, again, with the David Bakhtiari injury, it, that complicates things. Now you can kick Billy Turner to left tackle. You could potentially put Rick Wagner at right tackle. You've got Elton Jenkins and Lucas Patrick who can play center or guard. You've got John Runyon Jr. You've got some options there. Lucas Patrick, again, you've, you've got a variety of different options that you can play if Rick Wagner is back. If he's not, now you've got some serious questions. Again, assuming that uh, Corey Lindsley is gone, which I'll get to in a moment. But you know, if there's no uh, Rick Wagner, you could be looking at what Elton Jenkins at left tackle, John Runyon Jr. at left guard, Lucas Patrick at center. 
I don't know, maybe somebody like Elaine Taylor on a cheap deal or a Simon Stepaniak at right guard and then Billy Turner at right tackle. Like you are really cutting things close if you don't bring Rick Wagner back and David Bakhtiari is not ready to go. There's a draft and there's free agency and there's certainly some other things that they can do. Maybe Lindsley comes back, but you're cutting things very, very thin if Rick Wagner's not back. I, I'm leaning still that he's not because Green Bay needs every ounce of, of cap space that they can get. But that is going to be one of, honestly, I think the the borderline uh, decisions that that uh, Brian Gutekinds is going to have to make, the one that might, it seems weird to say Rick Wagner might keep him up at night, but it could go either way. And again, especially due to Bakhtiari's injury, that I think that's a really interesting one to keep an eye on. Then you've got three players that are free agents. Corey Lindsley, of course, being the top uh, of that list, Lane Taylor, and then Jared Valdir. I don't expect Jared Valdir to be back. You can make the argument that, again, if they cut Rick Wagner, that they need a tackle. I just don't think Valdir is ready to put in a full season of work. I think he would be somebody that maybe is a mercenary towards the end of the season for a playoff team like he was this past season. I don't see him putting a full year of work in. So I don't think he'll be back. I very much expect Lane Taylor to be back on a one-year minimum. Green Bay bringing him back on a one-year minimum deal with no guarantees for training camp makes all the sense in the world. There's no reason not to do it. He looked phenomenal at right guard uh, prior to the injury. You need as much depth as you can get, especially cheap depth, cheap veteran depth, even better, who knows the system, knows the players around him. It makes It's a no-brainer. Uh, he sat out the last two seasons basically with injuries, so I don't see any other team that's going to be you know welcoming him with a, a huge contract of any sort. And again, he fits better in Green Bay than he does anywhere else. So I expect that very much to get done. Corey Lindsley, again, it's a very difficult situation to see him back in Green Bay. We found out that the salary cap floor is going to be 180 million. There are some reports out there that it could get to 185, maybe even 190. If it gets to that point, much better chance that Corey Lindsley gets back is back with the Packers. Right now, I'm still saying he's not. I want to see him back. I think a lot of Packer fans do, but that's going to be another one of the huge ones to keep an eye on this offseason. For now, I'm going to say Lindsley's gone, Valdir is gone, Lane Taylor is in, uh, Rick Wagner is gone, and uh, Billy Turner is in. So that's where I'm leaving. And then you've got your list of you know guys that are going to compete in training camp for potential spots. That includes Ben Braden, Jake Hansen, Zach Johnson, Yash Nijman, who's an exclusive rights free agent, but those are pretty much just sign him and forget about it because those are really easy decisions. There's no guarantees. You bring him into camp if you cut it, and it's a minimum deal. You cut him, no harm, no foul. So I expect him to be back. And then Simon Stepaniak. So maybe Stepaniak Pontiac of that list could get involved in the conversations uh, for a potential, you know, starting guard spot. I could see him competing with a Lucas Patrick, a Lane Taylor, um, a John Runyon Jr. I think that group could be competing for some of those interior offensive line positions. Yash Nijman probably just challenging for a spot. I don't see much potential in Zach Johnson or Jake Hansen. I know he was a draft pick and people liked him coming out. He was... Uh, it, it's telling. Green Bay doesn't cut draft picks. It was telling that they cut him. He by he looked like a JV player uh, or like a freshman player playing varsity football uh, last year in, in high school. You know, like he he just didn't have the size, the bulk, the strength. Like you could tell, that, like just passing the eye test. Jake Hansen did not pass the eye test. Now it's possible he comes back and he bulks up and he looks better in his second season and all those sort of things. Uh, but I think he's a little bit behind the eight ball. And again, it's telling that they cut him as a draft pick out of camp, got him back on the practice squad later in the season. Ben Braden, another player with some positional flexibility that will fight for one of those final roster spots. So what does the offensive line look like? And again, there could be other free agents brought in. There could be draft picks going, you know, coming in, which I'll get to in just one second. But you know, if Bakhtiari is healthy, you could be looking at a Bakhtiari, Runyon, uh, Jenkins, Lucas Patrick, and Billy Turner type offensive line. And, you know, that those guard positions with Runyon and Patrick, I think Runyon, Patrick, Lane Taylor, Simon Stepaniak, all those guys in the potential, um, you know, you know, vying for a potential starting spot there. I could see all those guys getting in the conversation, but probably Bakhtiari and Turner on the outside. I still think Elton Jenkins at center. And then again, some of those guys competing for the guard spots, assuming Bakhtiari is healthy. When he's not, 
it again, you know, you're you're looking at potentially Billy Turner at left tackle, maybe Rick Wagner at right, otherwise Jenkins at left tackle, Billy Turner at right tackle, and then John Runyon Jr., Lucas Patrick, maybe Elaine Taylor, maybe a Simon Stepaniak, those guys rotating inside. That offensive line gets very thin very fast. And speaking of which, I have already gone on record on multiple occasions. My expectation, my belief is that it just gut feeling is that Green Bay will pick an offensive lineman with their first pick in the draft. I don't think they want to keep Billy Turner around too much longer. Their, their franchise left tackle just uh, you know, tore his ACL last year. I don't think Corey Lindsley's back. Lucas Patrick's, you know, is is uh, only he's got one year left on his deal and is not a long-term answer. You're not sure what you have in Runyon or Hanson or Stepaniak. Like right now, you know, you, you're still hoping that David Bakhtiari is going to play great for a while. And then you've got Elton Jenkins, you know, going in, I'm looking at 2022. And so Green Bay needs long-term uh, players at that offensive line position. And again, we just talked about how important it is and how Green Bay's offense went as the offensive line went. And plus they need help this year as well with the Bakhtiari injury and with needing some additional depth along the offensive line. Couple that together with the depth that's at the offensive line position in this draft. You look at you know mock drafts or just kind of player profiles of players in this draft, a ton of offensive linemen expected to go between 25 and 50, somewhere in that range. And certainly Green Bay is going to be drafting their first choice in that range. They love picking premium position players, quarterback, offensive tackle, edge rusher, defensive tackle, or cornerback. I expect it still to stay one of those players. And I think based on the depth of offensive line in this draft that and what they need long-term and this season, I think offensive line makes so much sense with that first round pick. So we'll see what happens. That's my bold prediction here on February 19th. Uh, but that is going to do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the Packers offensive line. Make sure to check in tomorrow as I have an all new episode right here on YouTube. Make sure to check out Andrew and Kyle breaking everything down Packers related on today's audio version of the podcast. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go!